Welcome back everybody to another Khan Academy tutorial. We're doing compound inequalities. This very well may be the toughest Khan Academy that you do all year. So I just wanted to preface uh, this Khan Academy with that. You really have to take your time. You really have to go through all your answers and do it step by step. Show all your work. Take your time with this. Get a separate piece of paper. Don't just try to do it in your head because you're gonna, you're gonna thank me later, okay? Because this one, this one can take a while. All right, now this requires some prerequisite information. So if you want uh, an idea of how to do compound inequalities, I suggest watching 1.6 uh, video notes. Um, so I'm going into this Khan Academy with that understanding to make this video shorter because this takes a while, okay? So when we're dealing with compound inequalities, the first thing we always need to do, step one, is we need to solve for the variable. I'll just put solve for x um, in this case because we're talking about x. So that's always the first step. So we're gonna ignore this or for now. We're gonna come back to it later, but the first thing we need to do is we need to solve for x. So I'm gonna split this up into this inequality and this inequality over here, 2x plus five is less than or equal to negative four. Okay, when dealing with these inequalities or any inequalities, you always wanna flip sign if you multiply or divide by a negative, okay? Negativo, okay. Just keep that in mind. This is just in the, in the memory bank here. Okay, let's get started. First thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna do the left one first. I'm gonna add four to both sides. I have 5x is greater than or equal to uh, 16 and divide by five, divide by five. And you can see why this one can be tough because we're dealing with some real cool fractions here. Um, not too bad, so we get this for an answer. This is, we're, we're, we're like one third of the way there. We're gonna do the same thing over here. We subtract five, subtract five. We get 12x is less than or equal to negative nine. We need to divide by 12, divide by 12. I hope you guys are good at reducing because we're gonna have to reduce the fractions here. X is less than or equal to, uh, we're gonna divide by three to the top, divide by three, and to the bottom, because that's what we reduce by, we get negative three over four. And x is less than or equal to that. Now, we didn't flip the sign, why? Because we didn't multiply or divide by a negative anywhere. And essentially, to solve inequalities, you treat them like an equal sign, and this is the only exception. Okay, so we have this as an answer, and this as an answer, and now we have to put it into context with what does or mean? Or means it can be either or. It can be either of them, meaning if we choose a random number, if it satisfies this one or this one, we're good, okay? It does not need to satisfy both at the same time. That's and, and we'll talk about that when we cross that, when we cross that bridge, but or any random number, any value needs to just satisfy one of these. It doesn't have to satisfy both, okay? So we're looking here and we're looking at the values that makes this true. Well, if we're talking about 16 over five, let's, I think it helps to kind of put it into reference. So if you wanna get a calculator out, this, this might be helpful actually, just so you kind of have a, a deeper understanding because I really wish they would uh, graph these, but they don't. <laughs> so 16 over five is 3.2. So this is saying all the values that are uh, 3.2 or above, because this uh, less greater than or equal to sign, that's what that means. And then obviously this is x is less than or equal to negative 0 0.75. So almost negative one. So if we were to graph this, and it's obviously not b, so I'm just gonna cross that out real quick. We would put 3.2 on a number line, here's zero, and then we have negative 0.75 right here. Zero, negative 7.5, okay. If we're talking about the values bigger than or equal to, Okay, this bracket uh, means that we're including 3.2, we're talking about this, or we're talking about this. Okay, so that was, that, just for reference, that's what our graph would look like. I know you guys have maybe have seen closed dots in the past, college courses, you're gonna see the brackets. So we know A is our answer, okay? We, we see the answer here, we see the answer here. A is our answer, but I also wanted to see, I uh, wanted to show you it graphically. Now, I wanna talk about some other answers real fast. It's possible that you get answers that don't have two inequalities like this if there's overlap. So those would, uh, those would be those answers if there's overlap. In this case, there's no overlap. As you can see there, it's going to the left and it's going to the right. 
So it's clearly not these ones, but I wanted to give you a heads up on that. And then now, when would there be no solutions? No solutions would be the case if we have a graph that looks exactly like this and it says and. Why? Well, if we pick a random value, it needs to satisfy both those conditions. So let's take zero for example. Zero is off in neutral space, okay? Is zero greater than 3.2? No. Is zero less than, there's that one. Is zero less than negative 0.75? No. So zero in everything in this area does not satisfy the inequality, okay? Now let's try something that's like five. Five obviously satisfied, the number five. That's over here. Okay, so there's five. Does five satisfy the inequality on the left? Yes, it does. Does it satisfy the one on the right? It does not. Five is not less than or equal to negative 7.5. So if we're talking about and, it needs to satisfy both of these inequalities, and it doesn't. Neither do, do any inequalities like negative two satisfy both these. It only satisfies one. So therefore, there's going to be no solutions with a graph that looks like this with the word and because there's no overlap. Think and and think overlap. That's what and means. There has to be overlap and clearly there's not. This one goes that way to the left. This one goes that way to the right. There's no overlap. Now all values are solutions. That's anytime we have a graph. So if, let's say we have a yellow graph here and it goes in both directions. Two arrows talking about all the values. Okay, that happens sometimes, but that's what all solutions looks like. Okay, I spent too much time on this problem, but I wanted to give you some background info. All right, next question. Ooh, we have an and. So again, I, I forgot to do the step two. Step two, uh, you figure out if it's or or and, or you're gonna include all values. Okay, and then uh, step two for and, you're just going to include overlap, overlapping, overlapping values. Include overlapping values. Okay, there we go. Um, terrific, Eric. You just wrote right over, oh, sorry, Mr. West. I just wrote right over those <laughs> values. So we have 4x minus 4, less than 8. And then we have 9x plus 5 is greater than 23. So these values, uh, this step is always going to be the same, even if it's and or or. We're going to solve. So plus 4 plus 4. 4x is less than 12. Divide by 4 to both sides. We get x is less than 3. Okay. No negatives there. We're good. Negative 5, negative 5. We get 9x is greater than, that's 18. Divide by 9, divide by 9. We get x is greater than Two. Okay, now let's put this in perspective because we got some answers and we're like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Well, for and, we're talking about overlap. Okay, so we're talking about values that are less than three but bigger than two. How do we write that together? Well, we have something that looks like this. We can put negative three and then we can say bigger than two. So it's letter A. Anytime you have like a sandwich like this, it's talking about and, it's talking about the overlapping area. Okay. Um, if we were to graph this, it would look like two, three, and then we'd have the parenthesis it used to be open dot. Now it's parenthesis, and it looks like this. So you can see there's clearly overlap here. Um, if we were to continue, uh, let's draw this guy in blue real quick. If we were to do this guy in blue, he would keep going on forever. If we were to do this guy in yellow, he'd start at two and he'd go forever to the right. We're talking about all the values bigger than that, but we don't want the values that are bigger than three, we don't want the values less than two because there's no overlap there. It doesn't satisfy both. Remember, we want both. It needs to satisfy both. There has to be overlap where both are true at the same time, okay? So that is only letter A. Bada beam, bada boom. Okay, or let's see if we can do this one quickly. This one's gonna be a tricky one, I think. 3x minus 8 is less than or equal to 23. This might be my last one too, depending on how much time it takes. Plus 8, plus 8. We get 3x is less than or equal to, what is that, 31? Ugh, this is gross. Divide by 3, divide by 3. We get x is less than or equal to 31 over 3. Okay, I see that answer, so we must be on the right track. Okay, now I got to do this guy on the right. I'll make him red. Why not? Negative 4x. Uh-oh, I see a problem already. Not a problem, but something we're going to have to take into consideration. Divide uh, minus 26, minus 26. I get negative 4x is greater than or equal to, uh, what is that, negative 20? Yeah. Now, what happens here? I'm going to do it in a different color. Let's do 
I don't know. Let's do green. I divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. This means I need to flip the sign. I divide it by a negative. So I'm flipping this guy this way, and I have to keep the x on the same side in which I had it before. So I have x on the left side still. Negative 20 divided by negative 4 is positive 5. Okay, so now we have x is less than or equal to 5, or x is less than or equal to 31 over 3. This is a little tricky now. This one's a little tricky. Why? Well, because there's going to be overlap, and it says or. Huh, what do we do? So let me graph this guy. The five's over here. Okay, and if we, just for you guys to understand a little bit better, I know you guys do better with decimals. This number right here in purple is the same thing as 10.3 repeating. Okay, and I'm going to round it to 10.3. Okay, so x is less than, I don't know why I put five there. Why did I put five there? Getting rid of this guy. Okay. We're going to make that purple instead. So this guy's going to be 10.3, rounded, rounded people, calm down, and this is 5. Now, we're saying, if we're to graph both of these, we're saying the values that are less than or equal to 5, so this way, and we're talking about the values that are less than or, e or, yeah, less than or equal to 10.3. Okay. So what's happening here? Well, if we were to keep drawing this purple one, you see that there would be overlap between the green and purple. If we're talking about and, we're talking about only this area. That would be an and problem because that's the only place where they overlap. If we're talking about the word or, which is the problem here, we need to include all the possible values of either or of these. I know that sounded weird, but we're talking about the values here, okay? And we need to talk about the values there. We don't want to exclude any values that are on the graph. So we have to include all of them. We don't want to say just less than or equal to 5. That would be an and statement because that's just where there's overlap. No, 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 no. Overlap is just for and. Get rid of that. Get that out of here. We want to talk about where all the possible values. And even though the purple, you're like, well, this is only choosing one of the options. Look, this is only... The x is less than or equal to 10.3. I, I see that. But this one encompasses all of this one anyway. So we're including all the possible values of both graphs, of both inequalities, with this guy, with this purple guy. This purple guy's strong. He includes all the values of both. Okay? So if we're talking about any values that are in either or, all we need is this guy. This guy takes care of both at the same time. Okay, so if it's and, we're only talking about the overlap where it satisfies both. For or, we need either one of these. So this area right here where it's bigger than 5 but less than 10.3 is totally valid. Okay, even though it doesn't satisfy this one, it doesn't matter because we're talking about or. So we're talking about x is less than or equal to 31 over 3. All right. Um, Okay, I'm going to do this one very fast. I'm, I'm sorry, this is like a bonus one. I just want to make sure we cover everything. Plus 5 less than 17. I'm going to subtract 5. I get uh, 12, negative 9x. I divide by negative 9. I need to flip the sign. x is uh, flip. And then this is going to be 4 over negative 3. Yuck. Okay, negative 4 over 3. We see that here and here, so we're going to possibly have something going on here. Uh, just in case... I want you guys to see it. This is uh, x is greater than negative 1.3. Okay, now let's do this one in green. We have 13x plus 25 less than negative 1. I need to do 13x, subtract 25 from both sides, negative 26. Sorry, I'm just kind of like talking out loud here, thinking out loud, Ed Sheeran. x is less than negative 2. I didn't divide or multiply, so I keep it like this. I have x is less than 2. So I have x is greater than negative 1.3. x is greater than negative 1.3. Negative 1.3. Uh, why did I make that in blue? Sorry for the wasted time. I'm trying to be efficient here. Time is money. You guys don't got all day to be on Khan Academy. Okay. So a negative. So here's zero. They're both below the zero. So that's good to know. We have negative 1.3 here. Let's call that in blue. Negative 1.3. And then we have negative 2 in this green, turquoise, whatever you want to call it. Negative 2. Okay, so here we're talking about the values that are less than negative 2. Boom. Less than negative 2. But then we're talking about the values that are bigger than negative 1.3. Uh, oh, this doesn't, sorry, that's not a bracket because it doesn't include it. It'd be an open dot for all you old school people. High school, this is college. 
So we're talking about the values that are less than 2 but not equal to. Then we're talking about the values bigger than negative 1.3 but not equal to. And we're saying and. That means there needs to be overlap. But guess what, people? Do you see overlap? There's no overlap. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means there's no solutions. If there's no overlap with and, there's no solutions because it doesn't satisfy both at the same time. Both, that's no, at same time time. It doesn't happen. So guess what? There's no solutions. Bada beam, bada boom. Get that 100%. Let's go. Hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you next time on West Explains